By Australian standards, the River Murray is a big river, and for much of its length, it runs through these beautiful golden cliffs. They're not only beautiful, but they're very important to the animals of the region. Swallows make their nests there, under the overhangs. They use River Murray mud. Sulphur-crested cockatoos use the cliffs too, for nesting. They're believed to be the only species of cockatoo that nests in the ground, rather than hollow limbs. Caves that used to shelter Aborigines now shelter foxes, and rabbits come here too. But if you look closely at the cliffs, you'll see lines that look like high water marks. They're not. They are levels in the cliff that actually have animal remains in them, like these. What are they? In fact, they're mysterious creatures because they all once lived in the sea. There are bits of coral there and there are fragments of shell, and there are many of these little things. What are they? In fact, they're fossil sea urchins. They're so plentiful that you can dig them out without doing any harm to anything. In fact, you find they look like this. There's the underneath with the mouth there, the knobs where the spines used to attach, and here's the top surface of one with a little five-starred pattern on it. And they're wonderful little bodies of fossil sea urchins. Don't look much like the ones you find on the beach, which are really more like this. Little crusty balls with perhaps some spikes sticking onto them. And if you look underneath, five little sharp teeth poking out. In fact, sea urchins are very, very interesting creatures because they're very closely related to the starfish, although a little ball doesn't look much like a star. I'll show you why it is. Starfish generally have five arms, and they're perhaps a bit like that when you find them. Underneath, they've got little suckers that grip onto the rocks. But if you were to take those five arms and fold them up, you'd get a five-lobed globe. And that's basically what a sea urchin is. Turn it over, and that's where the mouth is, right in the middle. And in fact, you can see that on this little creature. There he is, turn him over, there's his five-lobed mouth. Not so easy to see on that, perhaps, but this is a model that's uh, got all the spines removed, and it's uh, a bit easier to see there. Here are the lobes, one, two, three, four, and five, with, again, those little five teeth in the middle. I'm going to take those out. It's easier to do, perhaps, on a specimen that's already a little bit broken, so I'll just chip away at that and see if I can show you the mouth parts, because they have their surprises as well. Here we go. If you ever collect these things and take them home from the beach, make sure they're dry. If they're not, they'll rot and make a terrible pong in your cupboard or wherever you store them. Here we go, chipping them open and turning that over, clearing some of the muckery off. You see, it's quite an elaborate structure. In fact, it's a five-jawed mouth part of the sea urchin, and it activates each of these jaws so that the little sharp teeth on the other end, those bits poking through there, scrape algae or thin slime off the rocks where it's uh, trundling about. Clean it up a bit, it looks like this. An elaborate and very beautiful structure it's actually known as Aristotle's lantern, because it was first described by Aristotle, the ancient Greek, and it looked like a lantern of his time. Well, those uh, fossil sea urchins don't really look like many of the species around today. But there is one that you can find that looks rather like it, and that's the sand dollar. If I turn the sand dollar over, you can see that underneath it's still got a mouth that is rather like the mouth of the fossil, right in the middle there. And on its back, it still bears that five-lobed star, which is very reminiscent of the star that you find on its ancestor millions of years ago.